Well, hello, welcome to the video. This one's about one of the most influential bands in British rock music, Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Take it all over. In post-war Britain, the 1950s were a decade marked by conservatism, recovery and the rise of youth culture. Amidst the post-war rhythm of life in Britain, rock and roll emerged as a defining rebellion against the status quo. While the USA had Elvis, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis and Buddy Holly, the UK had its own rock revolutionaries and one band ignited the scene like a pirate's cannon. Pardon that weird simile. Fronted by the charismatic Johnny Kidd, who was actually born at Freddie Heath in 1935, the band got together in 1959 and swiftly commandeered British rock with a very distinctive sound and style. Back then, the charts were dominated by schmaltz, such as Kathy Kirby, Frankie Vaughan and Al McCogan, alternated with the occasional rock and roll tracks such as Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. They first found its success with their very first single, Please Don't Touch. Touch me, baby, cause I'm shaking so much. Oh, well, I get so nervous when I see her eyes that shine. By the way, a lot of people think that Joe Meek had something to do with Johnny Kidd and the Pirates, and apart from the fact most of the original Pirates went on to become the Tornadoes, who recorded Telstar for Joe Meek, apart from that, there's not really much that connects them. Four singles later, in June 1960, Johnny Kidd and the Pirates returned to their shaking theme, because remember, Please Don't Touch was about him shaking, with the iconic Shaking All Over. Can we just pause here to say, I'd like you to um, look at my Patreon page. And while you're at it, please like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, then you have my permission to stop watching. And subscribe. Why aren't you subscribing yet? You should be. I do lots of stuff like this. Some of it's better. Most of it's better, actually. Thank you for watching. And let's get back to Johnny Kid and the Pirates. Yes. Shake it all over. It wasn't just a song, it was a sensation. It still sounds pretty fresh now. But what was it that set Johnny Kidd and the Pirates apart from the other bands on the burgeoning rock scene? Well, for a start, they were flamboyant, they were fearless. Johnny Kidd adopted a pirate image, complete with eye patch, even though he didn't have an eye problem, and swashbuckling clothes. In an era of polished performers like Kathy Kirby, Frankie Vaughan, people like that, their raw energy and edgy style broke the mold, influencing countless artists that came after them. The Who. Led Zeppelin. And even the Beatles drew inspiration from Johnny Kidd's stage presence and musical innovations. Wilco Johnson, of course, learned to play the guitar after hearing Mick Green play with the Pirates. But the interesting thing is, despite legend, Mick Green didn't play on Shaking All Over. In fact, Mick Green came quite a bit later on. Tragically, Johnny Kidd's life echoed the live fast, die young ethos of the rock and roll era. In 1966, on the way back from a gig, he died in a car crash. That was the end of an era. Before he died, he did sanction the remaining members of the Pirates to go out on their own, because the Pirates had already broken up by this time, and he was playing with another band, which became a new Pirates. To start with, the remaining Pirates went their own ways. In 1976, a decade after their captain's departure, the band reformed with founding members Frank Farley and Johnny Spence, joined by the guitarist Mick Green. It was like a raw sound, but it was very loud, I'll just tell you now. Basically, they all had hearing problems, frankly. They just played so loud that when I put them on in the 80s and 90s, they often played very short sets, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. But for those half an hour, it was magic. It was like dynamite. They made albums in their own right, like Out of Their Schools and School Wars, and they didn't just relive their past glory, as I say. They reclaimed it, and they created their own life as the pirate. And they played at places like Dingwalls, and you would go to one of their shows and you would see in the audience all the members of the current hot bands, especially the punk era. The Pirates were a very big influence on punk. A lot of the bands, I think, followed Wilco Johnson's lead and saw Mick Green as like a god of it. He went off to play with Brian Ferry and Van Morrison, and he was an insurance salesman. I can remember every time I put him on 
in the 80s and the 90s, he would try and sell me insurance. <laughs> Those are the days, eh? <laughs> Here's a pub rock aside. Dr. Feelgood actually took their name from the B-side of a single that Johnny Kidd and the Pirates put out in 1964. The B-side was called, funny enough, Dr. Feelgood. Oh, too please, now you talk about women. I love them all. And the A-side was always and ever. Pirates continue to ride the waves of rock and roll, navigating through several lineup changes, but always retain the essence of their sound. I mean, for a while, Johnny Gustafsson, the Liverpoolian who'd been in a lot of big bands, he was in there for a while, and there were lots of little changes. From Johnny Kidd's enigmatic leadership to the Pirates' tenacious revival, the band always encapsulated the spirit of British rock. Rebellion, resilient, and relentless. Did you like that? That's pretty good, isn't it? This voyage, you see more pirate stuff. This voyage into the legacy of Johnny Kidd and the Pirates reminds us that the legends never die. They just evolve. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget, I've got a Patreon page too. See you next time. Bye.